So welcome to our Cinemagraph blog. Um, I'm sure you've obviously seen through our article already about how cinemagraphs work and the, the types of, of, of kind of photographs that, or, or video clips that you do need to actually execute one of these amazing pieces of artwork. So what we're actually going to do is um, take one of the clips that we've got and actually show you how to put it together, actually how to create that concept um, of the cinemagraph. So what we'll do, we'll start off by going to File and Open and here is our file. Now it's an MP4 file, so it's a video file already. It's not very long, it's only uh, uh, 15, 16 seconds long, um, which is fine as it's more than enough for what we actually need. So just click Open. Now, some earlier versions of Photoshop, depending on what you're using yourself, may not carry the ability to open video files. I think from around about the early parts of CS6, Creative Suite 6, I think they had it. Anything before that may not have the ability to try um, and actually do this within Photoshop. So you may be a little bit limited depending on what version of Photoshop you've got. If you've got anything within the Creative Cloud range, if you're subscribed to the Creative, Creative Cloud uh, subscription service, then you'll be absolutely fine. But once your um, video file opens, you'll have it on screen as it is here. And it will also give you a timeline bar. I'm just gonna open that a little bit further. And we'll actually zoom in a little bit closer just so we can see what we're doing a bit more closely. So now this is basically kind of our, our interface. We've got our layers panel on our left, on our right hand side and our video timeline at the bottom. Now what we want to achieve with this is to actually get a section of video that we can repeat over and over and over again so it looks like it's caught in that seamless loop. Now the video as it stands, if I just play it, it's obviously someone pouring some water into a glass um, within the reflection you see the water kind of raises higher and higher and higher so the problem with it is that we don't necessarily want to kind of capture the water going all the way up um, because it doesn't come all the way back down again so what we're actually going to try and isolate is the point where the water is pretty much full to the top of the glass and it's just those little bits right at the very end there that are just uh, being filled up and we'll hopefully try and kind of capture that as I say, in that eternal loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause that by hitting the spacebar for a minute. And now we've got, if we hang our mouse just over the edges of the video clip, it gives us this option to trim it. So you can do it at the front, you can do it at the back. So all we're going to actually do is because we want more of the back end of the video, we're actually just going to trim it. And as we do so, it gives us a little preview to show us where the video, if we let go now, would start. So it's a really handy little tool so I can see from about here, I'd say, I don't want the water to necessarily stop. So I reckon if we went to about here, there's a little bit of water kind of increases, but not so much, but I still want that, that flow of water coming into the cup. So we'll start about there. We can still trim it again afterwards. And then let's look at the back end. We're going to do the same there. So we don't want the water to be settled. We still want the, the actual flow of water coming in. So about the. So it shows us how long our video clip is. It's only very, very small here. I think if anything, it's possibly a little bit too small. So we can actually move our clip across the timeline just by holding it. And then we can open it back up again. Now we haven't deleted anything when we've trimmed it. The Photoshop still remembers what was going on and then it just gives us the length now of our video clip so it's still again very very short I think we may just go a little bit further just to open it up again so let's see I think I was probably a little bit harsh when I edited it so tightly before so now it's telling me that the clip, you can see in this little preview screen, the duration is uh, 1 second 22, which is fine. It doesn't really need to be more than a, a couple of seconds. We're not trying to make a whole movie. It really is just a, a small sequence. So you can just play that sequence back to yourself just so you can actually see how it goes. Now, if your video for any reason, if this is the first time you've ever done anything like this, then sometimes there's one or two features that are turned off uh, just by default. 
through Photoshop, you can see my video just keeps repeating over and over again. Now, if your video file reaches the end of its timeline and just stops, you just need to go to the settings icon here. So this little cog on the timeline, and then just press loop playback. So if it's not looped, I'll just show you now, and this is possibly how yours may look. It just stops at the very end. Now obviously what we need is a constant repetition here. So just make sure that loop playback button is selected. Now once we've got our video set in terms of the length and the, the action involved, what we also now need to do is create a still version of this image. So effectively just the photographic version of it, which we can then overlay. So how do we do that? Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it, but I find basically just take the file as it is, go to file, save as, and then save this image as a JPEG. So there won't be any movement in it at all. It's just going to be a, a still photograph. Um, now it doesn't really make too much of a difference which version of the photograph that you're taking because obviously if you move the timeline along you'd end up making a photograph of that or of that. I would generally put it towards the end. I think it's going to help me a little bit more with the masking that we're going to do. So I'm just going to go to uh, File, Save As and don't leave it as a Photoshop version. Just make it as a JPEG and then just press Save. Okay. And now what that will do is that wherever you've actually saved it to, obviously it'll make a JPEG version. And I'm just gonna bring that back here. So this is my photograph. This is my JPEG uh, version of the image. Now I'm gonna basically put that on top of what we've got here of our little video. So we're gonna take this photo version and then just go to select and all edit and copy. I'm just going to minimize that for now. We'll come back to our video and then we'll just go to edit and paste. So what that's done initially with the timeline, it's made our video and then it's put our still, which is purple, after it. Now we don't really want that. We actually want the still to be on top. So we're creating a layer. We've got like a mask on top. So the best way to do that, I find, is actually using your layers panel. So let me bring that back in here. So it's created um, a video group, which is one is the video, which you can see by the actual video strip icon here. And layer two is our photo. So let's just label them up so we can see. So one's the photo, one's the video. Now what we need to do is actually move this photo layer out of the group. So all you need to do is just grab it and push it up. Now when you push it up initially, you'll get this box version of this little blue line around the video group. That means it's just gonna put it back in the video group. So it's not moved it at all. You need to push it and then just push it that little bit extra so you just have the one solid line. That means it's now above the video group. So it's outside of that grouping. And you can see now on the timeline what that's done is given us two different tracks. We've got the video and we've got the photo. And now all we need to do is just drag it back across so they match up in terms of the length. You may find that the photo is a, is a lot longer, though it's not moving, it's just a default length. So I think it's set it to five seconds. So just go to the very end and just pull it so it matches up the length. So now, if we played back the video, you wouldn't see any movement at all. Because as ever, the top layer always shows first. So there's no movement going on there. It's just gonna constantly repeat, but we're not seeing anything. So this is where the magic comes in. Let's move our layers to the side, and now let's grab our eraser tool. Now this is very important as to where you use the eraser tool and how much you do of it. That's kind of down to you and down to your uh, particular image that you're working on. Now I've got a choice here that I can kind of be very surreal, and despite us actually kind of focusing upon this top version of the glass being uh, filled up with water, we could actually um, make it the moving part down here in the reflection. This could be kind of quite quirky. So I'm going to try that for a minute and we'll see how that actually works out, just so you can see the process. Um, again, depending upon what you're actually um, masking, you know, the type of image you're working with, I tend to find a slightly harder brush would work. Start with a small size and then you can always make it bigger. 
but all we're going to do is effectively erase. Now it's hard to see, obviously, when you've got two layers that are effectively the same, what you're actually erasing. So there's no harm in going to the layers panel on the left, on the right hand side, and just um, just hiding your video effectively for the moment. It's not going to take it away. It's just going to hide it for the moment, just so you can see what is actually happening and what areas you are eliminating. So I'm just going to do a small area. I may need to do some more when we actually see the final version. Now I'm just going to change it a little bit softer now, make it a bit smaller. Just to go around the edge with here. Oops, I may have gone a little bit too far there. So we'll see how that works. It's always a little bit with, with something like this with water because it's moving kind of quite heavily uh, in the glass. It's always a little bit of a risk to see if you've done too much or too little. But the only way to know that is to make sure that your video layer is now visible again. And then it's a case of just playing. So you can either use the play button here or just press space bar. So let's see. So you have that eternal repetition now because the video is just looping over and over again. Now we've got a little bit of the water kind of coming back in. You can see the, where the start and the end actually begins. So maybe we've masked it um, a little bit. Uh, we've, we've raised it maybe a little bit too much. So possibly in hindsight, we can go back and maybe take a little bit uh, of less of that away. So you can always do that by going back through your history states and undoing it, which we'll just have a quick look at now. So we'll just go to history and we'll just undo some of that erasing that we did earlier. So it's managed to remember most of our state movements there. So I think it's around about here that we've probably taken quite a bit of it out. So we will just have another little go of that again. Maybe not go as high, but try and catch some of these bubbles on the bottom here. But it's really fun to do. I mean, you can try this with any little video clip that you've got. As we've obviously said in the article, there's certain, there's certain requirements that you do need. You just need that single kind of movement, that, that kind of um, repeatable uh, sense of action. So if it's someone that's maybe swinging their leg, if they're sat on a table and swinging their leg, someone that's blinking and you've got lots of other movement going on around them, um, you can kind of mask all that out and just kind of capture that blinking, that repetition over and over again. Um, it's really fun. If you if you have a look online, hopefully you should be able to get a bit more inspiration on other cinema graphs that you've seen and just kind of create this effect again. So I've just masked a little less of that and we'll just try and repeat it one more time. So you can see that the bubbles again are just constantly repeating in there. There's a few of them that are still. So I think again, we can maybe actually probably take a few more out possibly on the left and right side, maybe go a little bit higher there as well. But, you know, for a first time effort, it's, it's a really, really good little experiment to play with for anybody. So I think again, I wish we could probably be a bit bolder actually and go right to the edge. So you see there, we may actually may just kind of trim the front of the video a little bit because I think there was a, a small portion of it that kind of repeated the uh, when it got to the end when it started again they didn't actually uh, line up so much so sometimes it's not so noticeable when the uh, when the clip is a little bit shorter but already there we've created a really really cool piece of artwork that has that kind of constant repetition there's nothing else moving you've got that stream of water coming in but it's actually the bubbles in the reflection that's very surreal now to basically stop that you can just press the uh, space bar just to stop your video it doesn't matter where you stop it but then when you need to save it it's not as simple as saving it as a psd um, or, or a jpeg obviously you want to keep that motion within the shot so um, best thing to do, and there's two ways to do this, you can either export it as a video again. So you go to file, export, and then render video. You can press that and basically save it as a video file. Or alternatively, you can go to file, export, and then save for web. 
and we can export this as a JPEG, uh, uh, sorry, as a GIF file or a GIF file. Now this again will keep our action going on over and over and over again. You can always just check that when the, win when the window comes up, you can just play it over and over again. Sometimes it's a little bit slow to render, depending upon the speed of your computer, but it just gives you that kind of effect to show you how it's going to work ultimately. So as long as you've got your presets up here, you've got a few options about JPEG, PNGs, um, you can save it as a GIF file, a GIF file there, and then you press save, and then you save as, um, or you can do it as a video. But ultimately, those are those are a couple of different options depending on what you actually want to use it for in the future. Um, but there we go. That's how you create a cinemagraph in Photoshop.